So as I was saying that update 9 has been released last Friday on 11th of February and uh, there are several updates in this version and I just want to show you some of the examples. First of all, if you are using EISC 360 16 code, then there are several major enhancements. For example, if you just go to the uh, go to the EISC design routine. So let me just show you that one. Uh, if you just go to the define parameters option, there are no, now two, two new parameters. One is the TSL parameter that is used for the tension slenderness check. So that has been introduced for the ASC 360-16 code. Along with that, we have another parameter, which is the SRT parameter, which is for the tension slenderness. So whether you are going to uh, consider the, the slenderness member length for the slenderness check of the tension member, or whether you want to consider the maximum value for the member length ly and z value for the tension slenderness ratio check that has been implemented there are a couple of bug fixes uh, related to the slender t section design uh, also related to the uh, tapered profile so uh, for aic code there are several changes and you can uh, or bug fixes so you can go through the revision history file for more details along with that there are a uh, couple of change in the load generation field and that is uh, that is something that is very exciting that I can say. The first one I want to show is about the mass model generator. So as you know uh, for seismic analysis whether it is a static seismic analysis or dynamic analysis we need to provide the seismic mass. So for dynamic analysis we need to uh, create the mass model and uh, normally we need to do the entire process manually. So you need to copy paste the value or just create a mass reference load case. And now it is completely automated in update nine version. So if you go to the mass model generator, you can find there are several options available by which you can use the existing gravity load data to generate your seismic mass. So uh, as you can notice that I have uh, my two dead load case, a gravity load case, dead load and live load. And using this dead load and live load case, I can specify the factor by which they will combine to generate the mass reference load case. And yes, the mass reference load case is not yet generated. Either we can generate the seismic mass under the first dynamic load case. Uh, for that, we need to first define the, uh, define the dynamic load case first. And else for static seismic or the dynamic load case, we can create a new a reference load case and if we click on the generate option you can see all the mass reference load case or all the mass in all three orthogonal directions are automatically generated so this data is uh, collected from the gravity load cases that i have already defined under this primary load case so this is one of the advantage of uh, or one of the new feature second feature which is very very helpful for uh, the direct analysis method for eisc code is about the auto load combination option. So now what has been happened here is that if you select the, for example, AC 716 code uh, to generate the load combination cases, you can find a new option available there that include notional load. Basically what it does is that when you generate your load combination cases for direct analysis method or for p delta analysis method, it can automatically add the notional load along with those uh, uh, those combination or repeat load cases. So if I just click on this generate loads, you can see the notional load has already been included with the combination load cases with the respective factor in all the direction which I have selected. So you don't have to go through the process once again means add the notional load manually. So you don't have to do this thing once again manually. So all these load combinations along with the notional load can be auto-generated using this new feature that is available under this auto-load combination table. And another feature which I like most is, uh, though it is not directly related to the ASC code, but this wind load generator option has been provided. Now it is available for the IS 875 code. So using this wind load generator, we can just specify some of the data like the building data, whether that is a cladded building or unclad building, some of the factors, and then wind load is automatically added to the model. So we can use the pressure coefficient method or the force coefficient method, and all the wind load cases is auto-generated and added to the model. So this is another major enhancement in the connected edition version or the latest update nine. 
and finally there is another option that is uh, basically useful to apply the load for the tank structure uh, which is basically this uh, this if you go to the plate load you can find the new inclusion there uh, that is the uh, that is the load or the full uh, partial or full plate pressure load on the projected area so this projected area option was not available previously so if you have an inclined plate you can apply the load directly on the projected area now so do you, these are some of the major enhancements in update 9 and also if you are using a very old version like the v8i version or v21 series then you can see find there are several other enhancements also so that's why you always suggest to use the latest version of connect edition so just want to inform you about this update 9 version so these are the some of the major enhancement Along with that, in the physical modeler now, the truss and cable specification has been added. And you know that uh, in physical modeler, we have included the tank or the structure widget to generate the tank model. So those are included in the connect edition. OK, so with this, uh, I am concluding the session. If you want to know more about the connect edition or what are the new enhancement in the update 9, what you can do is that you can directly go to the revision history folder. And there you can notice uh, there are several new enhance enhancements uh, in the Connect Edition. So if I can show you the, one of the examples, uh, so just these are all the enhancements in performed in Update 9. And you can find that there are almost 100 number of enhancements. So there are uh, some enhancement in the analysis and design engine. So as I was saying about the AISC 360 code, so you can find that there are some change for the seismic provision, which has been performed in update nine, or there has been some change in the in the in the design routine for the 360 torsion check. That, uh, that has been problem. There are several performance enhancement also. So if you want to go through through all the enhancement or all the change related to the to the, uh, to the generic feature, to the documentation of printing, or to the particular design engine, the interoperability, you need to go through the revision history file. So this file is already available in our Bentley community site, and you can go through this particular document. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.